when I'm looking at objects and thinking about things to use for the work, I'm looking for something that is loaded in a way that it excites me with the history that is in it and that structurally it's going to serve my purpose. Whatever materials one needs to grab, whether it's an engineer or a hot water heater, I think that all of those things we're allowed to have in our palette. The airplane parts first came into my work when I moved to California. In living in Topanga in California, it's afforded me a luxury of time and space that I really didn't have before. So when you have time, space, and great weather, it's kind of a magical combination for a sculptor. It's very different here, and I started taking trips out near where Edwards Air Force Base is, and I'd see their fields and fields of these refuse airplane parts, and they were beautifully made, the materials were beautiful. I was stunned how beautiful they were. I approached the elements in a very formal way. A long chunk, a skinny chunk, a round chunk, this color, that color, a scoop. People are gonna bring to every work of art their own thoughts. And if a work of art is a place that people can project those thoughts, that's what you do. Prior to finding the airplane parts, I started collecting trailers, mobile homes, and I started cutting them up to make a work with that. Mobile homes have the structural integrity of nothing, so I knew that if I collected enough of them, I could find a critical mass and start manipulating them. When I was working with the trailers and hot water heaters, with the hot water heaters, we really figured out how to use this thing, tensegrity, which is compression and tension. And in doing that, we saw that we were able to build out in space in ways that I had no clue that I would be able to. And that's when the wires became a really integral part of the work, visually and physically. In seeing that, we were able to carry that over into the other work that evolved over time. Now, when I first started looking at the boats, I saw a canoe. And I remember saying, wow, this thing looks just like my airplane parts. And I realized, oh yeah, it's made by Grumman. Grumman made all, so many airplanes during World War II, continues making airplanes. So I started thinking, this makes sense. There are these vehicles for the figure. And so I just started playing around with those. The color came with the boats. When I built the piece for Lincoln Center, at that point, because it was to be there for a summer, I was using lots of these brightly colored kayaks, really intense reds and blues. And those things are just, they're beautiful because they glow in the light and the light is semi-transparent. You know, I had never felt so comfortable with so much garish color before. But there was a certain point that I didn't want the color in those pieces anymore. I thought that the color was overpowering the form. There were certain boats that I had collected among the colorful ones that were old aluminum boats that had these beautiful patinas that had been used and reused. And when it rained and I saw them when they were wet, they looked like granite. And I thought, you know, the color comes into them because they're gray. And so with every reflection of light, the color keeps changing around them. And in a funny way, the patina on those surfaces that talk about time, the river that they've been on, the rocks that they've banged on, in a certain way remind me of the surfaces of the drawings that I've been working with also because it's a residue of a certain time 
built up in that material. In experimenting with these materials and working with them with my crew, we would find certain things that the materials would allow you to do. It was really fascinating to find what kind of cantilever you could really build out with that boat. And when did you know you were going too far with it? And how could you push it almost to that brink of almost being too far? And that was really fascinating to do. I built uh, some maquettes and uh, certain pieces I engineered with my crew. I have a fabulous engineer I've been working with for quite a while now, and he's able to design for me structures that can be sound in almost any environment. However, they're designed so that there's a flexibility when I'm building on site, I can build out a cantilever over here or over there. Now, boats and airplane parts, in terms of their mass and scale, uh, are quite light. And I started collecting these small aluminum cast playground things. They were kind of weird to me and I wasn't sure how to handle them and they were so figurative. I wasn't sure how to approach them. At a certain point I thought I have to be brave and start mucking around with these. I started working with them with my crew and they're quite heavy. I started seeing the figures as these little wiggly blobs of color and I started seeing de Kooning in it, the way the use of the color was, the forms a certain figurativeness up in them. And I just said to myself, oh, God, this is like a three-dimensional de Kooning. It's kind of just coming out in space at me. The thing that I really love about the wire is that you're kind of getting a math and a physics lessons in this really simple way before your eyes. Because, you know, sometimes I look at the work and I go, how is that thing standing? my own work, and then I go, look at the wires. Oh yeah, that one's going here and that one's going there. And you, I kind of marvel at the fact that those skinny little wires in those particular places can hold that massive weight in place and cantilever it over your head in a comfortable way. The Diversa Folia series started with a bunch of old cast iron turtles that we had here on the property and some wolves. And I really loved looking at them. The figurative nature of them threw me off at first. After I started working with them for a while, I realized that if I could turn them upside down and flip them around structurally, Suddenly, you saw them as these objects that were turned upside down and flying around rather than a figure of something. The really early drawings started when I was in graduate school. So I thought, well, let's think about what a drawing is. Since photography came around, drawings really shifted its purpose in the world. I l let it be for a few years, and then at a certain point, I realized it was something, and I could go back into it. And it was a way to harvest a certain energy. I love seeing the graphite go down on the paper, as I'm doing it, it almost seems like I'm making space. It, it really seems that way. What I always loved about the drawings, that I could develop this remarkable depth that seemed to go on endlessly. So for me, that I could get so much information, the registering of a certain time, this remarkable depth in space, and 
this constantly changing object, this constantly changing space, I really felt like I had gotten, found something. I also think of an artist in a way as an explorer and as a researcher, as a, as a scientist in a way because we're looking for a place that we can discover and learn about and share with the rest of the world uh, that hasn't really been seen before. <laughs>